Hey everyone, Randy with Extreme Sandbox. Welcome to this episode of Inside the Sandbox. Today, we're gonna to be doing a pre-op inspection on our Komatsu wheel load. I've got Alex Dahl here from Road Machinery and Supply. That is our Komatsu distributor. Today, you've seen, and you've seen in the past, we've done a lot of how to operate equipment videos. I think what's even more important is a thorough pre-op inspection that we do every day, but often don't have videos of that. So that's why we had Alex come out today to do this. Uh, you know, first thing I always tell you, I'm not an expert. You know, I think you've seen that in many of my videos. I kind of just, we like to share what we've learned out here, but it's great that we have someone like Alex, who is a diesel technician, that can go into a little bit more detail on this. Uh, again, consistency is key with any pre-op inspection. Our pre-ops that we do here, uh, we really separate into three areas. The first is just a general walk around. That's kind of our far looking to see if there's any damage, any leaks, anything that's really uh, that sticks out. The second is our compartment check. That's where we're starting to open doors and we look at more specific fluids, filters, things like that. And then the third and final is actually in the operator's cab. That's getting in and doing our final checks in there before we start the machine. So with that, again, Alex, thanks for coming out. I am going to turn it over to you to do our uh, pre-op inspection on this wheel loader. All righty. So like you said, we're going to start with the, the overview of everything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start right at the bucket up here. So a good thing to check when you are doing your inspection is, you know, just make sure that your bucket is all in one piece and there's no big dents, gouges, you know, anything obviously wrong with it. Um, you know, some wear and tear is natural because you are going to be you know, obviously putting material in here that can uh, damage your bucket. Um, but, you know, just make sure like your uh, bolts for your cutting edges are all there. They're not, you know, missing or anything like that. And these will wear down with, with time. So if they are like worn down or they don't look like a bolt anymore, that's okay. Um, as long as they're still tight and they're still there. Um, and then also, you know, check your cutting edge. Make sure you not got a nice good edge on it. Um, if it's pretty worn down or really, really rounded, um, you know, go ahead and maybe see if you can flip your cutting edge and, you know, use the other side of the, the cutting edge or, you know, if you have to replace, replace them all and, um, you know, get, get a whole new cutting edge on it. Um, and then we're going to go and check over on the tires over here. So for the tires, they're going to be the same for all of them. Um, you know, just Take a look at them, make sure you don't see any really big like cuts or any missing um, tread or anything like that. Or if they're flat, you know, that's obviously a sign that you probably want to get it fixed. Um, and then, you know, look in the rim here, make sure you have your uh, bolts that are holding your tire on. You know, you don't want to be missing any of those. Um, if you have a low tire, you know, you can go ahead and, and fill it up right here um, or, you know, call your service provider for your machine and they should be able to, to help you out there or give you the number to someone that can help you out. Um, and then we'll kind of come on back a little bit more over here. And then over here is kind of the uh, articulation point of the machine. So you know, just go ahead and look at all your hydraulic lines, make sure nothing's missing or broken, loose, cut, you know. Um, and then get down on the ground and kind of look under the, under the machine, make sure there's no leaks, make sure there's no parts that are hanging off of it or anything like that. And there's, there's not a lot to see in here just because everything is kind of hidden. And the only place to really look at it is kind of right through this center section right here. So if you want, you know, you can kind of get in there a little bit and look around and see if you can see anything or just get more familiar with your machine. And then um, we'll go to the back of the machine now. So once you're back here, uh, you got not a whole lot here. It's kind of just your, uh, your fender right here and um, your fuel tank is underneath there as well and your, your rear axle. So if you just get down on the ground and take a look underneath and make sure there's no dents in your gas tank or you're leaking fuel anywhere or your axle is uh, not leaking or anything like that. And then we'll, we'll jump on over to the other side. And then you know, same thing on, on this side as the other side, you know, with your tires, check them, check them all out, make sure everything's good. And, you know, check your uh, lugs for your tires, make sure you're not missing any or they're loose. That's another thing that you need to look for. And if they are, you know, call the correct person to come and fix them for you. And then kind of, you know, take a general look around the outside. Like another thing I noticed right here is your hydraulic levels 
low. You know, you don't see it in the sight glass right there. That's maybe something you need to address and, you know, add some hydraulic oil to it. And, you know, just kind of get a big picture of the machine. If there's any dents or any damages to the machine or anything like that, you know, maybe note them down somewhere, take a picture so you can let your, your boss know that that kind of thing's going on. And from there, we'll jump back over to the other side and start looking at some compartments. I think Alex really mentioned a key point there too is I, part of the pre-ops is noting any damages. So I think it's important that if you see anything that's out of place, whether it's broken glass, uh, any dents, any damage, you know, report that early. So that's what I've noticed with our guys when they go out there, we do a walk around just to document any of that before the shift. You don't want to be the guy at the end trying to claim that something was like that beforehand. So it's important to just note some of those pieces. I did forget one thing too, you know, make sure you look at your hydraulic cylinders and make sure if you have any like dust or dirt collecting right here, that is a possible sign that your seal and the end of your cylinder right here is starting to go out and you're leaking hydraulic oil down, you know. So just take a look at, at them and they're kind of hard to see because some of them are, are tucked up behind the tires and they just naturally get covered with dirt. Uh, but you know, just, just take a look and be proactive and, and making sure that, you know, wipe it off and then check it an hour later, two hours later before you go to lunch or something and see if dirt's back there and if it's wet or if there's you know, anything like that to give you a sign that maybe something's going on here. And looking probably at all the, checking all the connections behind. Yep. Yes, so. Yep. All right, so first stop over here is to check your washer fluid tank. So just undo the latch and fold her open, you know, make sure you got plenty of washer fluid if you're gonna be needing it, you know, it's rainy, snowy, muddy, whatever you need. You can also, there's a sight glass right here that you can see uh, how much is in it if that's easier for you. Or, and then we'll come over to this panel right here. Alrighty, so over here you have your uh, coolant reservoir and just make sure that that's at the full mark. You know, if it's low, add the correct coolant and the correct amount to it. Um, and then that's pretty much it for over here, except for your, your oil filter. You know, just make sure it's not leaking, make sure there's no dents or anything like that. And then, you know, just take a look at the machine, make sure nothing seems out of the ordinary or there's, you know, a cut line or something like that. You know, that just, that just doesn't seem right. And then in the back right here, this is where we have your radiator and fan. So when you're back here, I believe you'll be able to take this, open that up and you can get a nice good look at your, your radiator, your oil cooler, your air to air, and you know, take a look at it. Make sure there's no big gouges or dents or anything. Another big thing to look for is any dirt or debris because if there's any kind of dirt or debris around here that's going to affect how well your system can cool down everything and you know you don't want to overheat your equipment because then you potentially could be needing a new engine or other components that are very costly versus taking 10 minutes out of your day to you know get a garden hose and kind of clean it off and then also you know check your fan blade make sure there's no broken fan blades, they are plastic, they do break sometimes. Um, some are metal, so you know, just look and, and see. Then we'll go on over to this side. And now this side is where you have most of the things that you're gonna be checking, you know, like oils and whatnot. Um, first thing to do is, you know, look at your filters, make sure you your filters are, are there and there's no cracks or they're leaking or anything. And your fuel filter right here, this is your water separator. And make sure there's no water, or there's any debris in here. You know, you can take this off and clean it or you can call your service provider and have them come and do it for you. Or you can drain it off um, with a little valve right down here. Then your oil dipstick is gonna be right here. So, you know, go ahead and, and take it out and kind of give it a good wipe off and then give it a nice look and it's right at the high mark which is right where it should be and on this one it says engine stopped so if you were to pull this out while the engine is running it could potentially be uh, below the low mark 
So that's just something to keep in mind that, you know, don't pull it out while it's running because it can affect your, your reading. So again, you know, just kind of make sure you, you go over everything and look and then your air filter is up in the corner up over here and there's a little gauge right in the corner over here that is for your air filter and you can't see it now but there's a little yellow uh, like gauge I guess that if that makes sense that'll that'll expose itself in there the more restricted your air filter is so that's just something you can look at instead of actually taking your filter out and inspecting it is if you see the little yellow gauge is up near the the change filter sign you know maybe it's time that you take that filter out and you blow it out with an air hose or you just go and get a new air filter from your uh, Komatsu dealer or whatever brand you have. And then right over here we're gonna have our our def tank right here and it's pretty self-explanatory there's a sight glass to see how much def you have in there and then a fill cap if you need to fill it up and make sure you don't overfill it and make sure you have plenty in there um, you know if you got a a uh, little bit on hand and you just got to top it off you know make sure you do that you don't want to you definitely don't want to run out of death fluid that's for sure yeah. now we'll jump on up and go to the cab so one thing i missed was your transfer case or transmission um, is right under here there's just a little cap you got to unscrew and then kind of got a feel for it there's a little dipstick right here go ahead and wipe all the oil off of it and before you stick it back in here, I just want you guys to know that at least on this piece of equipment, there is a hot idle and a cold stop uh, filled mark. So if you pull this out while it's running, you just have to know which side to look at because it, it will vary with the machine running. So just be aware of that and make sure when you pull it, you don't get alarmed if you see it's way high or way low on the other side. You know, check, check both sides and then verify whether or not the machine's running. And then you want to go ahead and screw it back on and we'll jump up in the cab. So a good thing to look for is, you know, make sure there's no broken glass or broken mirrors that are going to cause any safety hazards. You know, you want to be all, always be able to see what's behind you and what's in front of you. And then, you know, just give a quick look at the general cleanliness of it if it's dirty you know maybe grab a little broom or something and, and sweep it out and you know just kind of keep your workspace uh, as clean as you can and then you know just kind of grab some of your functions make sure it they work you know your steering wheel isn't going to be able to turn all the way but you know make sure that it can turn a little bit you know maybe if you want to move your levers or what have you and then uh, another good thing to do is if you want to key the um, key it on you know make sure you don't have any codes or alarms or anything like that you know after you do that you can check like your radio and your air conditioning and stuff like that and then if you were to start it make sure you always put your seat belt on you put your seat belt on make sure it locks nice and good and you're not going anywhere and that that wraps up checking over a wheel loader well, I want to thank Alex for coming out, doing the pre-op inspection on our Komatsu wheel loader. Again, very appreciative to have Alex and Road Machinery and Supply supporting our sites. Uh, you know, I think it's very important, we may not have mentioned this at the beginning, but uh, every wheel loader, you're going to have a manual. So depending on who the manufacturer is, it's that's probably your first point, is make sure you're checking the manual. They're going to have a pre-op inspection uh, checklist that they're going to recommend. So I definitely would start there. Uh, we just tried to cover some general pieces that we look at there. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this. I, I encourage you, please leave us comments. Uh, give us any advice you might have or any questions you might have below. You know, I'm sure we, whether or not we miss things or you do it a different way, there is no right way. There's, everyone's got their own routines and I think it's consistency is key there. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Thanks. Uh -huh.